welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at Ubuntu 2204, the latest version of the highly popular Linux distro. This was released on the 21st of April 2022 and it's an LTS or long term support version of the operating system, which means it'll receive updates until 2027. So, Let's go and take a closer look. Right, it's April the 21st and here we are on the Ubuntu website where Ubuntu 22.04 has just been released. And as we can see here, it's got the code name Jammy Jellyfish. So we'll click on download and go to Ubuntu desktop so we can get hold of a file. And if you look down here, we'll see there we are, there's Ubuntu 2204, very exciting. And we can see that its system requirements are not too onerous, a two gigahertz dual core processor, four gigabytes of memory, and 25 gigabytes of drive space to install. So this should be okay for the majority of, of modern desktop and laptop computers. So we'll click on download to get hold of an ISO file. There we are, and we'll save that like that. And as the download proceeds, it's worth noting that a new long-term support version of Ubuntu is released every two years, with its name reflecting the year and month of release. So, for example, the last LTS version was Ubuntu 20.04 or Focal Fossa, released in April 2020, and now in April 2022 we have Ubuntu 22.04, the Jammy Jellyfish. Between each long-term support release, Ubuntu also gets six monthly updates, but as these have just nine months of support, many people, myself included, stick to the LTS versions. And if you're wondering, I run Ubuntu every day on a PC connected to my television. Anyway, with the download complete, we'll close down the browser and run up Belena Etcher, which you could obtain from belena.io forward slash etcher, and we'll select the ISO file we've just downloaded. There we are. And I've already plugged a USB flash drive into the computer, which Etcher has picked up. So we'll click on flash. And uh, yes, Windows, we really want to do it. And Etcher will now turn the flash drive into a bootable Ubuntu 2204 media. And do note that doing this will delete all files from the USB drive. Right. I've now got the USB drive plugged into my i5 test rig, so we'll turn it on. There we are, and the PC is set in its BIOS to boot from a USB drive if present. And there we are, it's worked, so we'll pick the first option, which is try to install Ubuntu. And note that booting Ubuntu from a USB drive and selecting the option we just selected will not change anything on your computer. So it's perfectly safe to do it if you just want to try Ubuntu out. However, here we'll be doing a full install onto the computer's SSD, which is currently a blank drive with no operating system. And here we are, we can see the Jammy Jellyfish coming into view. And here we could just try out Ubuntu if we wish to, but what I'm going to do, as I've just said, is do an install. So I'll click on Install Ubuntu. And I have to pick my language like that, which is definitely English UK and English UK and Continue. And I'm going to do a normal installation. We want to download updates whilst installing. And I also want to install third-party software for graphics and additional media formats. So again, we'll click on Continue. And the top option we've now got is to erase the disk and install Ubuntu, which is what we're going to do. You can do things which are more complicated under something else. You could, for example, be installing Ubuntu alongside Windows if it was already on your computer. But here we've got the most straightforward installation possible onto a blank SSD. So we'll click on Install Now. And it'll just check we want to do it. Yes, we do. And I have to set some of the basic things we always set during an installation, where am I in the world for time, things like that. And I have to set up an account. There we are, all the details are entered. And I'd note this is just a local account on the computer. And we'll now click on continue again. And there we are, the happy marine invertebrate, the jammy jellyfish, will get on installing itself on the computer. And there we are, the installation is complete. So we'll just click on Restart Now. 
and remove our installation media and press enter. And by Jingo, we've now booted Ubuntu from the SSD. So we'll just log in. There we go. And we've got a first run wizard here. Do I want to connect online accounts? No, I'm going to skip that. Am I going to help improve Ubuntu? Yes, I'll do that. I think I'll help the cause, but I'm not going to turn on location services. And there we are, we're all ready to go with the jammy jellyfish hiding just under here. But as usual in one of these videos, and I want to make a few scaling changes so things look better on video, and I'll come back to you when I've done that. Greetings, here I am back again, and we're going to take a look around, both to introduce Ubuntu to new users and to highlight new features. Please note that I'll be including changes introduced since Ubuntu 2004, as many people don't install the intermediate six monthly updates. So the most important thing to say here is that Ubuntu 2204 is a no major shocks release. There's no difficult transition here from the previous version. It's not like going from, for example, Windows 7 to Windows 8. Rather, the Jammy Jellyfish delivers subtle and polished updates to the user interface and applications, along with some technology changes under the hood. Starting with the interface, by default, the updated GNOME desktop continues to have a top bar and a vertical dock, from which I think we'll launch the uh, Nautilus File Manager, which has been updated, looks very nice, and I'm sure I'll enjoy wrangling data here. If we go to the top bar on the right, we find there's still a menu here, which gives us access to important things like the ability to log out and power off at the end of a session. But we've also now here got access to some power management modes, which are new in Ubuntu 2204, and I'll say more about these in a second. Also here we can open up all settings like that, where, as you can see in screen display, I've already set fractional scaling and set a scale factor of 150%. If we move up to appearance, which is just uh, up here, there it is, let's move that down there. There's quite a few changes here, and most notably the ability to change the accent color from Ubuntu's classic orange to one of nine other colors. So we could have, for example, blue, and that would uh, reflect straight away in the, the farm manager up there, over on the dock, etc. Or we could have red, or we could have uh, green. It's amazing what difference changing a color makes, isn't it? But I think I'm gonna stick with orange, I can't deal with all this change straight away. We've also here got revised dark modes and light modes. I do like the dark mode, let's stick with that for a second. But we've lost here the standard mode, so now we've only got two modes to select from. If I uh, scroll down here, we've got more new settings, lots of which deal with the dock. And one of the things you might have noticed is that the trash can, which is called the rubbish bin here because I'm in the UK, has been moved from a desktop onto the dock. But we can configure this if we wish. There's a new configure dock behavior button, which allows us to turn on off the rubbish bin or trash can like that. And we can also choose whether we wish to include volumes, whether they're mounted or not, etc. There's also now a control called panel mode. And if we turn that off, the dock doesn't fill the entire display. We can see that more if I make it smaller with its uh, icons. You see it just fills some of the display, although I think, again, I'm going to stick with the, uh, the classic mode. If we go up a bit, you'll see there's now a button to control showing of a personal folder. Let's just move up there. The personal folder is down here. We can uh, flick that on and off. And you'll also see it's down there. The default position for new icons is bottom right. But again, as you can see, we can change that so new icons would go where we wanted them. Another thing to look at here, let's just get rid of that, be tidy, is we've got a brand new section called multitasking. And this controls things like, for example, active screen edges. If I took this window and push it to the top, it would do that thing to move it out and we can move it back again. I hate features like that in operating systems. For me, the most important thing about this new control panel is that we can turn that type of thing off. But if you like using things like hot callers and that sort of stuff, this is important. And also down here, we've got control of workspaces, whether we have a fixed number, a variable number, and how they work on multiple monitors, things like that. It's exciting to have a whole new part of the, the settings panel. And talking of new things, let's go down to power, which is just uh, down there, where we've got more options now, although not massively more here on desktop. But earlier, I ran things up on a laptop where we now have a wide spectrum of power options, and not least, 
these finally include the ability to show the remaining battery capacity as a percentage on the top bar. So, let's now turn to applications with favourites included here on the dock, things like the Rhythm Box Music Player and the Firefox web browser. Let's launch that up. There we go. And let's also have launched, for example, LibreOffice Writer. Have to launch that in a video like this. And we have to write in the word hello in very large letters. It is a law when making review videos to do that. There we are. And as you might have noticed, on the dock, when we've launched an application, against it a dot appears in the accent color. There for LibreOffice Writer and here for the Firefox web browser. And if we open up another window in an application, for example, in LibreOffice Writer, we open up a new text document like that, and we'll write, say, goodbye here. It would seem a sensible idea, wouldn't it? Let's keep things nice and uh, yin and yang, all that type of stuff. And as you can now hopefully see, on the dock, we've now got two dots against LibreOffice Writer because two windows are open. And if we click on the icon, we can now move between them using this as a means of a navigation, which is rather handy. Or if we wish, there is a menu that appears on the top bar up here for the application with the focus here for LibreOffice Writer. And again, we can use this as a means of navigation or of launching new documents or quitting, things like that. And you'll see if I go across to the Firefox web browser, this menu changes because Firefox now has the focus. Across from this control, we've also got a button labeled activities. And if I press that, it'll show everything running on the system. And again, we can use it as a means of navigation. Or if we wish, we can get to activities by pressing the super key, the button on the keyboard with the Windows logo on it. If I press that, again, it brings up activities and we can select between things using that button to our heart's content. Although this said, we can also still use Alt and Tab, which is my favorite means of moving between different applications and works perfectly well here in Ubuntu. Now, fortunately, we're not just limited to using applications from the dock. There's lots of other applications pre-installed. And if we go down here to show applications, it shows us everything installed on the system. And indeed, it also shows us workspaces. We can see at the top here the workspace we're using, or we could start a new workspace, which has got nothing on it. Let's just launch the uh, file browser to have something on that workspace. And if we go back to show applications, you can see there's that workspace. We can go back to the first one just like that. And as I'm sure you've worked out, here we can see all applications installed on the system. We can stroll across them horizontally like that, if I can get it right. In previous versions of Ubuntu, the scrolling here was vertical, not horizontal. What a radical change. And I have to admit, in this screen is, I think, the one thing that isn't quite right in Ubuntu 2204 in terms of the interface, which is the labels on all the applications. And I know I've got 150% scale factor set here, but scale factors go up to 275. And even on 150, all the actual labels on these icons are getting cut off for no apparent reason. There's masses of space available. Why aren't they on display? This said, there is something very positive about this screen because now if I grab an application, for example, Solitaire, I can grab it like that, move it around. You couldn't move these icons around. You couldn't rearrange them in previous versions of Ubuntu. And the fact you now can, you can bring your favorite applications to the front of this screen, I think is a very useful thing to be able to do. Talking of applications and innovation, one of the great additions to Ubuntu 2204 is a much improved screen capture and screencasting facility. And we access this using the print screen key like this, where as you can see, we can grab a selection, just move it out as we wish, or we can grab a window, different windows are available. We could have, for example, that one, or we could grab the entire screen. Let's do a window just to prove the principle. We'll grab goodbye and capture like that. It's now put that in the clipboard, but also if we go across to the file manager, which is on another workspace, hope you're keeping up with this, I think I am, we can open up pictures and we can open up screenshots and in there, there we find the capture it's made of that particular window. Now, finally, when it comes to applications, I thought I should show you Ubuntu software over here. And this allows us to see everything installed on the system again and to uninstall them if we wish. It allows us to perform updates. Everything's currently up to date. And here, of course, we can add new applications if we wish. And we can do that by searching for them. We can do it by going down to 
editor's picks down here, editor's choice, or we can look inside categories, art and design being obviously a great one to look at. We can install something like Blender, for example, if we wanted to. So it's very easy here to install new pieces of software. And I think what I'm going to do is to install Critter by way of example, a great painting application. All we have to do is to click on install and enter our password. There we go. And it'll install the application. And there we go, that is finished. Let's clear up on this workspace like that. And hopefully down here, if we look at all applications on the system, Critter is now there on the end. It is. We have very straightforwardly installed a new piece of software, which I'm sure the Jammy Jellyfish will enjoy. Right, let's now look at some technical changes, starting with the fact that in Ubuntu 22.04, the default display server is Wayland rather than the traditional Xorg. But you can still use Xorg in Ubuntu 22.04 by selecting it using the gear icon when you log in. And this setting will be remembered until you alter it again. Personally, I have made the switch back to Xorg as Wayland has a problem with fractional scaling that produces blurry output in some applications unless you have a high DPI display. So I'm using Xorg to obtain a sharper and more comfortable browser image, as you may be able to see in this comparison. Back with our list of technical changes, Firefox is now a snap installation. And if you upgrade from Ubuntu 20.04, the deb version is replaced. Snap is a Linux software packaging and installation technology developed by Canonical, the publishers of Ubuntu. And whilst using Snap rather than other technologies is potentially beneficial and transparent to many users, others find it controversial. Finally, note that Ubuntu 22.04 uses the GRUB 2.06 bootloader, and there have been reports that by default this is not set to probe for other operating systems. So, if you rely on Grub to dual boot your computer, do check this out carefully before you upgrade. So, there we are. We've got a new version of Ubuntu. Solid, dependable and colourful as always. And I look forward to upgrading the PC connected to my television from the Focal Fossa to the Jammy Jellyfish. But what do you think about Ubuntu 22.04? Will you be trying it out? Will you be upgrading to it? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.